just reaching for a piece of you. Hi, I'm Tony Moore and this is How You Do It. Today we're looking at the age-old problem of um, snare drum stand mounted tom-toms. That's like we grab one, a big tom like this, and we chuck it up on our snare stand because we want to look super cool and retro. However, it creates a fundamental problem. What that problem is, is depending on your snare stand, it'll actually terminate, um, the vibration and frequency will terminate into a surface or the ground. It's called earthing. Um, to demonstrate what that is, this is what the tom normally sounds like. So come in a little bit closer so you can hear the drum resonating. I only hit it here and you'll hear it resonate and I'll count off how long it rings for. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so it's gone about nine. So we've got about a nine second-ish, maybe eight, nine second kind of resonance. When it's earthed, if I just sit that down on the bench like that and hit it, you'll hear what it does now. Here we go. Two, three, four, five, Six, there we go, six. So it's shortened by about a third. On a snare stand, it can be really short. It can just be donk. Like you hit it and it goes like that and there's nothing to it. So a quick fix, this is um this is an Axis aluminium, super light, and this thing is so light. Um, it's a great stand. A couple of features I want you to look at. Zoom down here and have a look here. You'll see it's got rubber isolated feet. Now this isn't just like a rubber foot stuck on a stand. It's actually rubber isolated. So if I have my tom placed up on here and I hit it, the vibration runs all the way down and down into these parts, but it actually terminates. How do I know? I hold this section, I hit the drum, and I can feel where the vibration is. Now the vibration's not coming all the way down to here, so the tom actually resonates quite well. But I've got a small problem with this one, and I'll show you what it does. So I know this is the upside, but when that's mounted on here like that, it's very, very close. See how close it is to the snare drum, the head? Sorry, not snare head. I'm thinking snare drum because I use it as snare drum too. But see how close it is. So the problem with that is, is when I actually hit a drum hard, that head will actually come into contact with this part and it creates another problem. So some of the newer ones have a bit of a rubber ring here, but I thought I'll make a section and I'll show you what to do. Now this, um, this is a fix for any snare stand that you have, and this will make your drum resonate on any snare stand. So, what you're gonna need, a couple of things. Okay, I've already, uh, the reason I've sort of dropped in here and I should, should be doing it from the beginning, is I started doing it, I thought, oh crap, I should film this because you guys would really like it. So, let's film it. So what I've got here, this is actually a rubber 10 inch Tom uh, practice pad that you just put on and play um, the surface and I'm just using that it's about eight eight mil thick rubber it's quite bouncy as you can see it's very quite responsive and I've been cutting some little strips now the shape of this strip is designed to go over this part here I'll uh, hold it there like that you'll see this circle here I've cut to insert over that section and then drop down into this position here um, and and what that does is it creates a rubber bridge i guess that enables the tom to almost float um, and resonate and it sounds heat it sounds great it sounds really good um, but it also lifts my drum up but i decided i want to do two of those on each one so i thought i'll quickly show you how i actually make these ones and then you can go from there so to make them, we're going to need a couple of things. A straight edge, which is an aluminium ruler. A knife. Now, if you've got a blunt blade, grab yourself an oil stone over here. Oh, here you go. An oil stone and literally just forward, back, forward, back. So you do a couple of strokes in each direction on, a, on an oil stone and that basically renews that blade super sharp. So I'll throw that over there. We don't need that anymore. Wipe that off. Now, um, get a bit of something to chop on, unless you want to chop on your bench. And we're just going to cut a couple of little strips off. Um, easiest way to do that is square that up there, like that, so we know it's this here is about 25 mil an inch. Um, and I'm going to cut straight down, not on an angle, not like this, not like that, straight down. And I'm just going to do a series of light cuts first, just very light and gentle. I'm actually just scoring the surface. 
Now, you can, you'll actually feel the blade start to drop on in as you cut through. And the reason you want it nice and straight is that each time you cut, you're cutting down and you want a nice clean edge, much like that. That's a nice clean edge right there. So we want to get that nice straight edge. Um, that way it looks professional and it also means that we know how to cut straight. So one more cut, I can feel the bench or the board there already. We shall just do another one just to make sure. Um, chop, 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 chop. And another one. And one more, I can actually feel it. So um, obviously there we go, it's all clear. So that cut here, if you come in nice and close, you can see that's a nice clean edge, except for the dirt I put on it. It's a nice clean edge. It looks professional, looks like I've cut it with a machine of some sort. Um, that's a nice sharp blade. Now, these particular parts here, I've assembled to sit on here, but I have a lot of 12 inch toms. Um, so this here, this little rubber section, I've actually set up that if I have a 12 inch tom, I bring, or a 12 inch snare drum, I just bring it straight in and I'm already at the position that I want. The problem is when I have this part sitting on here, I'm gonna use a cable tie and I'll show you how and why. I use a cable tie to tie this part down. So it'll wrap around here and tie down. At the moment, this is sitting over. So what I don't want when I'm in a hurry to put another snare on, I don't want it to go jam and oh, I can't get the stupid part across. So I'm actually gonna reduce the distance here and cut these off about here and then re-scallop these little parts. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's just line them all up quick on the board like that. You want to make sure they're in alignment. Just do this. Actually, I'm going to line them up off the hole because I remember. Yeah, so I'm going to line them off, off the hole there. I'm going to come out to where that distance is. We're just going to cut it through again just quick. We're almost through. Just keeping your blade nice and straight. If you've got, um, sometimes you can buy rubber from a supplier. It's not very good quality. If you happen to buy poor quality rubber, um, it actually is really hard to cut. And when you cut it, it doesn't look very good. It looks like you've, it's looked like you've tried to mangle a piece of toast with the, you know, cut through a piece of bread with a butter knife or something. It's pretty crap. So anyway, we want it to be, pretty nice looking so just gonna score the back edge of that that looks crap no <laughs> actually comes up nice and clean anyway I'll actually rebuff or re-machine the end so you'll notice this part's rounded um, I'll actually clean this up a little bit um, I'll pull out the belt set I'll show you what I do with that okay anyway that's that part so we want to cut another three of these I'm going to show you how to do it very quick First thing is, how do we get that hole in there? We'll move that over to here. We'll move that to there. We'll move this into this spot here. The reason I'm putting it here is because this, this bench um, has a leg that goes down about this point and I want to make sure I'm hitting the spot right. Now, we're going to use one of these. All this is, <clears throat> is a piece of drum pipe. Cymbal stand, boom stand, whatever it happens to be. I grab myself a little file it's cut off on the end, and I just file a nice sharp edge all the way around there like that. So it's sharp, it's not like razor sharp, but it's sharp enough. Then I just put this, I'm actually going to hammer it straight through there, like that. I hold it like this and I just go... Did that move on? <laughs> uh, and that's it. And that's our hole punched. So that's how we punch the holes, okay? Um, now, I'm gonna use a larger one to cover this section here, and I'm gonna use the same one just to put some scallop, little little scallops for our, and I'll show you what that is. Okay, so first of all, let's just chop this off. I should've actually cut that to the size I wanted, but I didn't, don't know why. So I'm just gonna cut that off. But that's how you make it. If you ever need to make little grommets uh, for, whatever you're doing with your drum stuff, if there's somewhere where you want to isolate something or 
make a, a grommet. Let's say on the bottom of your stand here, you don't want that stand to drop and go bang. In a studio, you can actually cut a rubber grommet to sit there. So when you drop it, it's quiet. There's no slap to it. So there's all, all sorts of reasons, but this is how, this is one way to do it. Just get a bigger pipe to, to cut a bigger hole. So almost through. Okay, so we'll cut our pieces off. Make sure we can get roughly three. Just gonna check. Looks like we're close. Yeah, we're good. All good. Like there. So just doing this, putting the rule where we want to cut, and we'll just cut through. Remember, it's in, it's important just to keep it um, nice and straight. There are other tricks you can use to clean up if you don't have it nice and straight, but the the goal here is that we do a good job first and then we don't have to fix a crap job but sometimes it can't be helped and sometimes you're working with someone else's rubbish so we want to allow for everything there we go another one now if you've got a, a guillotine you don't need to use a stanley knife but i don't have a guillotine so we're just going to use a stanley knife hopefully you got one of those um, you can use a kitchen knife, use those things too. Um, generally, you get in trouble if you use a kitchen knife um, by somebody. Unless, of course, you own the kitchen. Then you don't get in trouble. Same again, last one, we'll spin that round. Okay, there we are. Um, also, I thought I'd mention if there's, um, if there's anything you want me to try and show you how to do, um, I'm just doing things as I, as I have to do the job. I figured if I got to do it, someone else there probably also. But if there's things that I'm, um, that you're doing at home or you're trying to do and you're not sure how to do it, um, I don't know if I know how to do it, but let me know, send me a message or whatever you want to do and let's see what we can, so let's see what we can do. Okay, so I've got my sample pieces here. That's the top one, and I've got three to punch. It's a bit bouncy on here, so I'm gonna drop down onto the floor. So come down here on the ground with me. I actually don't wanna spill my tea, that's all. <laughs> okay, we'll get our, our piece of this. This is an old crappy piece of pipe. You can see the old bits just sitting inside it there. We're just gonna line that up in the middle wherever we want it. Gentle tap and then hit it fairly hard. Okay, you see it's punched all the way through. Up into here, there's your piece, done. So same for the next one. I find you do need to hammer on a new piece each time. And that's okay. Just dropping that in first. That's about it. And just punching through you can hear it and you can also feel when it drops through um, I'll lower this back like that all right they're all good Come up good now I'll grab my other couple of bits now I mentioned about using cable ties the reason I want to use a cable tie is just because they're really uh, robust. And I'm basically going to insert it around there. But in order for it to stay there, I need to put little cuts, little scallops. So I'm going to do that. Now, an easy way to do it is just to lay a few out how you want them to be. I'm going to use the smaller version, which is this one here. And I'm going to come back just a little bit, not much, off that edge. You'll see I'm splitting between the two, two pieces. I'm just gonna hit them. Chop, chop. There we go. So you see it just chops the piece straight out like that. And we just keep hammering all of them till we're happy. Same thing, I'm working on about a five mil distance in. You can, it doesn't matter how you wanna hold it, hold however. 
a little bit of bounce there. Okay, the, the first trick is hit it hard and then just keep hitting. Much like Fight Club. <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay, another one there. It's good. So the ones that are done move out and just keep moving on. It's a fairly simple process. Make sure you get the right end. <laughs> About there. You can see that the board underneath, once it starts getting a bit beat up, it, it doesn't really like to play nice. One. Okay, so we'll grab our pieces, jump up the top. Okay, what have we got? It's all good, all good, all good. Now I'm going to refine them all a bit later, but before I refine, I'm just going to use the round ones. What I mean by refining them is I'm actually going to shape off the edges. I do two things to do that. I just cut a rough circle by chop, chop, chopping. And then I get my belt sander, and the belt sander sort of runs around like this. I use the flat side. If it's going this direction, I literally hold it on here, and I just keep moving it up until it cuts nice and square. I can show you, but it's just boring. <laughs> All right, so we're looking here. We'll drop our first piece on, like that. Oh, actually, I was going to use the rounded ones. So remember I said, because I run a 12 inch tom, I want to be able to just wind it in pretty quickly. So that, that should still work nicely there. I'm just on that edge. Um, it gives me plenty, 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 plenty of, um, of rubber support here. Now the top one I want to keep flat. Let me just crank this up here. I want to keep this one relatively flat. This one here, I don't care if it's sitting down. The reason it's sitting down is you'll see that bottom piece where it comes into an alignment is sort of sitting up. It's half up, half down. So, you know, it's up to you on your own stand. Um, sometimes they're like a little rectangle. To do a rectangle, just punch the two edges and then square off the middle with your knife. It's fairly simple. The other way to do a rectangle is you just hammer this part here into an ellipse or like a square kind of rectangle and then you can actually chop it as well. So you can make the shape whatever you want it to be. The notches are so that when I wrap this around like that, it's actually guided so it's linking up together and I've still got plenty of clearance. I've got a lot of wood hoop drums, some are 20 mil. You'll see I've got a good inch before I hit anything anyway. So I can sit a drum on here, a big wood hoop drum. It's not gonna hit on this. And then I've got plenty of room to move either in or out. I don't even really need too much support there. So I'm not gonna make these crank down tight. The reason I have the notches like, like that is that once I've actually got that cable tie around it, they sort of hold, right? If I've got something already in here, they hold where they want to be. They're loose, which is the whole point of having a tom that's suspended. Um, it basically means it's going to be loose. So let's just chuck these on quick so that you can sort of get an idea. I'm going to put this tom up on here and give it a hit. And wait, just have a listen. Okay, um, some of these are in alignment, some are out, like this one here is out not lining up to the one underneath this one lines up that one lines up I would just do a little chop on that later and get that one rolling here's our Tom sitting up on here and let me just adjust this one here I moved it in before so as you can see it's actually sitting there it's firm but 
Um, this bar here is only just to stop this rattling when I hit it. The other thing is when I hit it, you'll hear the roof and everything around it vibrating. It's not the drum rattling. Um, it's actually everything else. So you can see that drum has actually got a lot of support. Even over here, it's not even sitting on this bar. It's sitting right up on that. So anyway, let's give it a hit and see what it sounds like. Seven, eight. It's a long. Let's try it again. Ready? It's even slightly longer than nine. So it's great at actually giving more resonance than just holding the drum in midair. Now, the only reason that would be is that the energy of the shell, when you hit it bouncing up and down, is being energized by the rubber. Either way, it's a success. It actually works really well. It's super cheap. It cost me zero. I had these, I had that. Um, once I cl um, clamp these on here and put those Loctites on, it's all gonna be awesome. So um, anyway, I'm Tony Moore. That's how you do it. Rock hard, see you on the next one.